Hey guys and thanks for tuning in again. A while ago I made a video about my Arduino based Ambilight system for a PC. It was very popular and I'm glad that I helped a lot of you guys make your own. I want to fix some mistakes from my previous video and make the project a little bit more accessible for everyone. So in this project we will be making the same Arduino based Ambilight system but without the need for any soldering. The guys at BTF Lighting agreed to send me over the necessary parts for this project. You can check out their store on AliExpress, where you can find all the stuff you'll need, and anything and everything related to LEDs and lighting you can imagine. Check out their store in the link below. In my previous build, I used 30 LEDs per meter. It was nice, but I thought it could be a bit brighter. That's why I got 60 LEDs per meter this time, and if you ask me, I wouldn't go any more than that for a couple of reasons. First off, they're plenty bright. I even found myself turning down the brightness in the software because it was getting too distracting and even brighter than the monitor itself. The second reason is, if you're going to use this on anything larger than a 24 inch monitor, make sure you leave the power cables at the beginning and at the end of the strip. That way you can power the strip from both sides as the voltage drops significantly towards the end and you might encounter color rendering and flickering issues on the tail end of the strip. You should definitely adhere to the recommendations on the listing for the strips and use an adequate power supply or maybe even a more powerful one because it will only use as much power as the strip needs and it's good to have some overhead. For my build on a 27 inch monitor I used about 1.5 meters of the strip which at 18 watts per meter comes out to about 27 watts which divided by 5 volts comes to about 5.4 amps. That's why I used an 8 amp power supply, just to be on the safe side. These are basically all the things you're going to need for this build. You can find affiliate links to all the components in the description below. First off, the actual WS2812B addressable LED strip. Note the small arrow on the strip pointing to one side. This is the direction that the signal is carried over from one LED to the other. Make sure you follow this arrow all the way around your monitor. And also, make sure you start the strip with the pre-soldered connector on both sides, as you will power the strip from both ends. I made this mistake not powering from the other side, and I had to manually solder on wires at the end to connect to the power supply. Next, you'll need a small breadboard for connecting up your data and ground wires from the strip to your Arduino. And you can mount it later to the back of your monitor, so that it's out of sight with some double-sided tape. You'll also need an Arduino Nano. I experimented with an ESP8266 because I thought it would have more power for computation, but after some tests it didn't seem that you needed the extra power. And you would also need to add a logic level shifter in between the ESP8266 and the strip because of the 33 volt logic of the microcontroller. Next, we'll need some of these L brackets for connecting the strip in the corners of the monitor. These are very convenient for connecting two strips together in a 90 degrees angle. Keep in mind you might have some trouble with them as the pads on the connector don't align with the pads on the strip 100% so you might have to bend the leads on the connector a bit inward to make sure they have a good connection. Or if you own a soldering iron and you know how to solder you can add a bit of solder to make the connections permanent. I myself didn't have to solder anything and managed to get everything connected properly without using a soldering iron at all. Next you'll need a power brick. Make sure you get a 5V one and as I said before calculate the amount of power you need based on the length of the strip and number of LEDs per meter and then go a bit stronger than that just in case. These DC terminal to female adapters are very useful for connecting everything together. Make sure you get a pair of these. And with the strip you'll get a couple of these breakout wires for 3 pin connectors. You'll need a mini USB to USB A wire to connect the Arduino to your PC and a couple of breadboard wires for connecting the common ground and data line to your Arduino. Next thing you have to do is measure and cut the LED strip to size. Go around the monitor and measure how many LEDs you can fit on one side of the monitor. I decided to go counterclockwise, making sure that I follow the little arrow on the strip on each strip. I put the L connectors on the side to see where I have to cut and then I took some large scissors and cut the strip at that point. I went around doing the same thing for all four sides. To connect the strips you need to open up both sides of the connector. Gently push in the strip on both ends and make sure you don't bend the strip as it can damage the lines inside it. 
put the connector back on and tighten it with a pair of pliers if it doesn't work with your hands. Another thing that I would recommend you do is to check all the connections before gluing down the strip to the monitor. The best way to do this is with a multimeter. Check the continuity between the positive pads and the negative pads at the beginning and the end of the strip. If you have continuity and an ohm reading less than 1 ohm, you are good to go. Once you have checked and made sure that there is a good connection from the start to the end of the strip, you can take some cleaning fluid and clean the back of the monitor and then glue the strips to it one by one. That's the hard part done. Now we just have to connect up everything. Cut the middle green wire from the connector on the end. Strip the isolation and join the side facing the start of the strip to a breadboard cable. Strip another side of a breadboard cable and join it with an any negative wire coming out from either side of the strip and isolate it as well. Connect the red loose wire from the start of the strip to the plus terminal of the female adapter. The join negative wires that you just joined to the negative terminal. Attach your Arduino to the breadboard and connect the data wire that you connected to pin D6 and the other side of the join negative breadboard wire to the ground pin. Plug one end of the USB cable to your Arduino and the other one to your PC. Download and install the latest version of the Arduino IDE from their site. Open it and go to Tools, Manage Libraries. Search for the FastLight library and install version 3.2.6, which was the one that I used for this project and that was tested. Close your Arduino Studio at this time. Go to GitHub and download two files. First the Arduino sketch and the Prismatic unofficial software for Windows, Linux or Mac OS. Open the Arduino sketch. Change the number of LEDs to the amount that you have and the data pin to 6. Keep everything else as is. Save the project, go to Tools, Boards, choose Arduino Nano. From Tools, Processor, choose Atmega 328P Old Bootloader. From Tools, Port, select the serial port the Arduino is connected to and remember this number. And finally, click the Upload button. If all goes well, your Arduino should be successfully flashed and red, green and blue should blink from all the lights. Close the Arduino IDE and open up Prismatic. Make sure you have your lights turned on. Go to the device menu and run the configuration wizard. Click next. Choose add a light. Select the COM port your Arduino was connected to, minus COM14, and choose the baud rate 115200. You might have to experiment with the color format. In my case, RGB worked fine, but if your colors don't seem to be right, try choosing a different format. Click next and you are presented with the zone placement window. Write down how many LEDs you have in your system. The number of top, bottom and on the sides. And experiment with the stand width to see when your LEDs seem to be in the right place. It doesn't have to be perfect, but try to be as close as you can. You can invert the order as well and add a start offset if you need to. On the final screen, you can set the color temperature to match the wall behind your monitor. Adjust these sliders until you get as close to a white color being reflected from your wall as possible. And when you are done, press finish. There are a number of options in the software you can tinker around with, and I'm not going to go through all of them. You can experiment with the settings to get the perfect setup for you. And that's it! The DIY Arduino Ambilight project is complete. I want to thank you all for the support you guys gave me so far. I have many exciting projects coming up that I have to finish, so stick around and make sure you subscribe and click on the bell icon next to the subscribe button if you don't want to miss any of them. It really helps me a lot and helps me know that you enjoyed my content. If you have any questions regarding this or any other project, make sure to join my Discord channel. I'll try to answer anyone to the best of my knowledge and try to point them in the right direction. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!